welcome to this edition of High School Rewind, available on highschoolrewind.com. We've traveled down to Mount Pleasant, Utah, here at the Brunker Wilkie Gymnasium as the Wasatch Academy Tigers prepare to host the Lone Peak Knights here as a part of the Free Tax USA Shootout. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Dane Stewart here to bring you tonight's game. Really excited for the game we have coming up for you here tonight on High School Rewind. Let's start first with the visiting Lone Peak Knights. This team comes in 2-0 overall and, uh, you know, coming off a big win. They lost, got upset in the 5A playoffs last year to Viewmont. They just avenged that loss, coming off an 88-77 victory over the Vikings. And they are led by a really good player. Maybe you've heard of him. His name, Frank Jackson. This is a top 15 player in the country. Has already pledged to play for the Blue the Duke Blue Devils. He is the state's leading scorer. He comes in tonight averaging 38 points per ball game. Wow, what a season so far for the senior from Lone Peak. He's got great help around him, including Nate Harkness, second on the team in scoring. And then Steven Ashworth, he actually leads the state in assists. So this is a team that has a lot of options to really help spread the ball. It's one of the reasons why they're averaging over 80 points per ball game coming into this one here tonight. Now let's switch and talk a little bit about the Wasatch Academy Tigers. This team comes in 7-0, and perfect on the young season here so far. And they are led by a top 100 player in their own right, that being Kobe McEwen, the future Utah State Aggie at the point leads this team in scoring doing so with over 15 points per game also a balanced roster for the Tigers when you look at a guy like Shamil Stevenson second on the team in scoring as well as Yasip Vrankic watch for him down low he's gonna have to have a big night tonight going up against the bigs of Lone Peak both these two teams come in undefeated on the season one of them will leave that way which one we're about to find out tip off coming up next here on High School Rewind Ashworth, Jackson, Brinkerhoff, Harkness, and Pollard donning the maroon and gold for Lone Peak. Meanwhile, for the home Wasatch Academy Tigers, McEwen, Stevenson, Acott, Rowe, and Vronkic on the floor in their white and orange trim. Ready to tip here from Wasatch Academy. It's controlled by the Tigers and Kobe McEwen at the point. Number one on the floor and in the hearts of fans here down in Mount Pleasant. Future Aggie for the Wasatch Academy Tigers. Near side with Shamil Stevenson. Over to McEwen, looking to drive in the key. Boy, that opened up easily. Two quick points for Kobe McEwen. And the Tigers on the board first, two nothing out of the gates. Ashworth with it, near side. Boy, nice job by Pollard that time on the drive. Couldn't hit the shot and that's out off of the Knights. Jackson gonna pick up McEwen. Boy, what a fun matchup. That's gonna be all night long. Two top 100 players on the drive. Acott going glass. Emmanuel Acott, the 6'5 sophomore with his first bucket of the night. Great start here for the Tigers early on. Near side with Ashworth. Jackson. Brinkerhoff with it underneath and Ashworth. Able to net his first points of the night and the first points for the Knights. The 6'1 sophomore guard, Stephen Ashworth. Jackson tipped that, but was able to be controlled by the home squad. What a drive by McEwen. Count the bucket and the foul. McEwen to the line to shoot a free throw. Foul was on Brinkerhoff, his first, as McEwen can't get the free throw to fall. Six to two, our score here. Minute and a half in from Gino Morgan Court. Jackson on the drive, blocked from behind by McEwen, and a foul call gonna come here. We'll see who netted it. Boy, they called McEwen. That's a tough foul to take for the senior guard. Jackson. Good on his first free throw, his second free throw. Off the back of the iron. Rebound, however, by Chad Pollard. Now Jackson for three. No good. And a long rebound again corralled by Pollard. Ashworth, nice extra pass in the corner. Harkness can't net the three. And it's McEwen down the other way. Looking to go to the hoop, and he's fouled by Jackson. McEwen back to the line to shoot a pair. McEwen's first free throw just rimmed out on him. He couldn't believe it. Second attempt here as Jackson picked up his first foul on the play. 
And McEwen nets his first free throw make of the night. One for three early on from the charity stripe is Kobe McEwen. But right now he leads all scores with five points. Seven to three. The Tiger advantage. Jackson will hand this off to Brinkerhoff. Top of the key now with Ashworth using the screen by Brinkerhoff. Now looking to drive that closed off by McEwen. Boy, good find to Pollard pass out. Now Brinkerhoff again with the take, and he floats one up and get up and in. Excuse me, that was actually Nate Harkness, the 6'6 junior forward with his first bucket of the night. Second leading scorer on the team, averaging over 15 per game and good for Lone Peak to get him going early. Is this three-pointer by Acott no good and rebounded by the Knights. Quickly up the floor it goes. Three-pointer on the way from Ashworth, no good, and the rebound brought in by Yosip. A 6'7", junior forward center inside. And boy, what a great defensive play made by Brinkerhoff as he got all ball on that shot by Rowe. And now Ashworth able to corral it and then nearly turned it over. What a great hustle play there by Yosip. Out of the inbound, Jackson, out of the timeout, excuse me, Jackson to inbound. Near side with Ashworth. Boy, McEwen with the tall task of having to deal with Brinkerhoff in the post. Jackson with a little shake from straight away. Three-point shot won't go, and a strong rebound that time by Jackson Rowe. McEwen being hounded by Ashworth. Able to create some separation. Pull up, three-pointer, no good. What a strong board by Emmanuel Acott to keep the possession alive for the Tigers. Stevenson pass out. Into the post, Rowe to throw it down! Jackson Rowe, an early exclamation mark for the Tigers. It's nine to five, Wasatch Academy up early. Midway through this opening quarter. Jackson, boy, what a great move. Uses that right hand, couldn't get it to fall, and it's rebounded by Acott. Tough night early on here for Jackson. McEwen the other way. And that shot off the mark, rebounded by Stevenson, and then turned over. Jackson coming down the other end, going glass, left it short. The rebound couldn't be saved. Right into the hands of Shamil Stevenson, kicked it, but able to track it down for Wasatch Academy. Boy, frenetic pace here early on. McEwen and a blocking call, count the bucket. As Ashworth will pick up his first foul, he didn't get there in time. To the line to shoot will be Kobe McEwen. Free throw from McEwen is good. Eight points for Kobe McEwen in this first quarter. It's a 12 to five lead for the home Wasatch Academy Tigers. Jackson in the post, going against Acott. Double team comes and Jackson gets the roll. Mentioned a tough night, just three points here early on for Jackson is missed a number of shots that he normally makes. What a great find down to Rowe as it was the vision of Josip Vronkic. And then the foul and Rowe will head to the line as it's the first foul on Nate Harkness. Rowe's first free throw, just able to get over the front of the rim and in. Second one is nothing but net. 14-7, Wasatch Academy. That was the fourth team foul called on the Knights here. Long three-pointer by Ashworth is good. And a big bucket there, five points for Steven Ashworth, the sophomore, able to pull the Knights back to within four here. McEwen, what great hesitation, kick out, three-pointer on the way from Stevenson, well off the mark. McEwen with the board, couldn't get it to fall, but does draw the foul on Brinkerhoff. It will be number two on the 6'6 sophomore center. Clayton Wilson checks in for Brinkerhoff. McEwen missed another free throw. His second attempt here is good. Ashworth picked up by McEwen. Fronting Jackson in the post was Acott. Good idea. Now Jackson able to get it on the other end. Turnaround jumper, tough shot. Front of the iron, and the rebound comes off. Rebounded by Yosef. McEwen behind the back, going strong. What a, what a great shot by Kobe McEwen. Watch for that in the top five. Kobe McEwen, what a great play. A long three-pointer and an answer by Nate Harkness. 
And it's 17-13 as we approach two minutes left. McEwen going strong and he's rewarded again. Back to the line will go Kobe McEwen. Tyson Doman checks in for Frank Jackson. McEwen good on his first free throw. Second free throw, no good. Couldn't bring in the board as Chase Paul, or Chad Pollard did. Kick out, three-pointer on the way from Harkness, no good, and another rebound brought in by this Wasatch Academy squad, and Yosef going the other way. Shamil Stevenson, end to end. His first points of the night, and then that one nearly stolen. What a great play by Vronkic, though he couldn't keep it in play. Talmadge Gunther checking in for the Knights, the fantastic quarterback for the football squad. Can also do it on the hardwood. 20 to 13, the lead for the Tigers. Lone Peak works it around the perimeter. Pump fake, Wilson nearly turned it over. Instead, a foul going to be called. First foul on Vronkic, second team foul on the Tigers. Ashworth from way outside, back of the iron, long board, able to be chased down. Doman, kick, and that ball deflected out off the active hands of Vronkic. Inbounded. Gunther, cross-court pass and a three-pointer from Nate Harkness off the mark, rebounded by Stevenson. And a timeout going to be taken here by the Tigers. Had to call a timeout as Jackson Rowe was hobbling there for Wasatch Academy. He will come off the floor as now Milan Serlig checks in for him. And then that ball turned over. Heading the other way, Ashworth. And a block and the foul is coming back with Stevenson. Able to get all ball, but the body contact. An easy call there for the officials as Ashworth to the line. Ashworth able to make both free throws as Chantry Ross checks in for him. And it's a 20 to 15 ball game with 45 seconds remaining here in our opening quarter. The Wasatch Academy Tigers, a great start, especially for Kobe McEwen. Inside, Josip Frankic. His first points of the night, though he certainly had impact through steals and rebounding up to this point. Talmadge Gunther with it. Vrankic going to pick him up at the three-point line, and then that ball kicked. It will stay here with Lone Peak. Inbounded in the corner with Harkness. Coming off the screen was Ross. He's going to drive baseline, and Chantry Ross able to float one up and good. A sophomore guard with his first points tonight. Langdon, kick out. Stevenson's three was blocked. Saved, the shot is off, and count the bucket. Only a two, but Josip Vrankic able to beat the buzzer, and it's a 24-17 lead for the Tigers at the end of the first. Second quarter underway and important for Lone Peak to get this guy going. Frank Jackson only had three points in that first quarter. Ashworth led the way with seven for the Knights. Ross over to Harkness and back up top with Frank Jackson. In the post now, Harkness working against Vrankic and a foul going to be called here on Vrankic. It will be his second of the ball game. And Emmanuel Acott checks in for Vrankic. As Jackson looking to drive, step back, pull up, jumper, no good. Rebounded by McEwen. Up the floor quickly, Langdon driving, and then tried to pass it. That ball deflected and will stay here with the Tigers. Rowe back in the ball game, good to see him. As we mentioned, he exited the first quarter with what looked like maybe a rolled ankle of some sort. McEwen, what a move! As Jackson gonna pick up the foul here, it will be number two on Frank Jackson. That was the seventh team foul on Lone Peak. So Wasatch Academy in the bonus the rest of this half is McEwen good with both free throws. 14 points for Kobe McEwen. Wow, what a great start. Jackson gonna pass over to Domans. Lone Peak trying to get into the offense here. That entry pass broken up into the hands of Jackson Rowe. McEwen, pull up, long jumper, count the bucket. He was campaigning for the foul. Officials 
Didn't go for it, but the shot good anyway. Far side now with Doman. Jackson attacking, and it's blocked by Shamil Stevenson. Oh, what a move with the ball. Coast to coast, Stevenson wouldn't go down. Rowe, what a great pass. Over to Stevenson, shot no good, ball deflected before Frank Jackson now looking to push it for Lone Peak. Drop pass to Tyson Doman for three. And the first points of this second quarter for Lone Peak to Tyson Doman, a great three-pointer in transition. McEwen now. Ball worked around the perimeter. Langdon trying to give a little shimmy and shake. Kick out to Stevenson. McEwen now looking to attack some space. Great passing by Wasatch Academy. And it's going to be Acott who can't convert on the three. And then a foul on the board going to be called on McEwen. And that should be number two on Kobe McEwen. Far side pump fake by Doman. Now stuck on the baseline. Passes out. Three-pointer on the way from Nate Harkness. His second made three-pointer of the night. Eight points now for Nate Harkness. And the Lone Peak Knights are hanging around here, 28-23. Five and a half left here as Langdon holding near midcourt. Now McEwen with it. Picked up by Brinkerhoff. Down low with Rowe. Again, Jackson Rowe to throw it down. What can I say? The man likes his Oreos. He's been a dunker tonight, two of them here early on. Jackson being guarded by Stevenson. Jackson able to find some space, and what a great take by Frank Jackson. Wow, you see him turn on those jets once he just gets just a sliver of space and able to finish at the hoop. Now Acott looking to return the favor. Stevenson. Baseline kicked out to McEwen. He finds some space. What a spin move by Kobe McEwen. Couldn't finish. Ball batted around. Rowe, and we've got a foul here on the floor. Chase Pollard checks in for Brinkerhoff, who just picked up his third. McEwen, good on his first attempt at the line. He's awarded a second here in a one-and-one -one situation. And a second free throw good as well. 32-25. The Tigers out in front as we are approaching the midpoint here of this second quarter. Three-pointer on the way, no good, and rebounded by McEwen. Quickly up the floor. Stevenson looking to attack Jackson. Tough shot, no good. Loose ball, and a foul going to go here against Jackson Rowe. Should be his first. That was the sixth team foul called on the Tigers. So Lone Peak now will be shooting the rest of this first half. And a foul called here on Stevenson as Jackson was working on him in the post. Damian Squire checks in for Wasatch Academy. As Stevenson will head to the bench with two fouls. Jackson able to hit both free throws. It's 32-27. Advantage for Wasatch Academy. Oh my goodness. What a great take by Langdon and then to switch to the left hand in midair. Drive the other way, shot blocked, but a foul going to be called here against Jackson Rowe, his second. First free throw from Harkness was good. Second one was left a little short. 34-28. Langdon brings the ball up the floor for the Tigers. Ross guarding him. Acott, kick out, McEwen going to try from distance, shot no good, ball batted away. Now McEwen driving baseline, looking for some help, spin around, and he stepped on the baseline, he'll turn it over. Ashworth dribbling near side, zone here by Wasatch Academy. In the corner, Jackson going to fire the three. Back of the iron, wouldn't go down for him. McEwen has the ball knocked away, and now numbers coming for Lone Peak. Kick out, step back, three-pointer for Chantry Ross. Left it short. Could have had another shot. Instead, he'll pass down low. That ball swatted away. Emmanuel Acott comes over with the help D, and now attacking the glass, and the foul going to be called here 
going to go against Chase Pollard, his first of the ball game. Squires' first free throw was good. Second free throw good as well. The lead back up to eight for the Tigers. It's lived in this range for much of this first half. And that pass a little beyond the arms of Ashworth coming down the other way. Shot no good. The putback is Emmanuel Acott made sure of that. The follow up and the dunk for Acott. And the lead up to 10. 2.20 left here in the opening half. Jackson on the drive, just able to get that over the front of the iron and good. 38-30 as we approach the two minute mark. Drive by Langdon and it just wouldn't go for him. Rebound to the Tigers, three pointer, no good. And pulling in the rebound was Steven Ashworth. A 6-1 sophomore coming up, working the glass. Kick back out to Ashworth. Good ball movement as Jackson looking to drive baseline. And a blocking foul going to be called here against Squire, his first. Frank Jackson at the line, able to make both free throws. Great way to start to get your feel in this ball game. As we mentioned, it's been a tough first half for Frank Jackson. Despite that, he still has 11 points. Behind the back, step back, jumper for Langdon, back of the iron, and rebounded by Lone Peak is giving it chase with Squire, though he couldn't control it. Long three-pointer from Doman, no good, and that shot rebounded by Yosef. Excuse me, it wasn't Yosef. An offensive foul the other way, though, as Langdon attacking the glasses has been done much in this first half. But a charge called, and it's back to Lone Peak. Jackson, Doman, extra pass to Gunther, going to fire the three, no good. And that out of bounds will go back to Wasatch Academy. One minute remaining here in the opening half. It's 38-32 advantage home squad. The Tigers with the lead here. Far side with Squire. He'll pass back to McEwen. And that ball batted out. What a play by Doman, able to come up and get the steal on the floor. That's a good, hard play there. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Getting his own rebound was Chad Pollard, though he couldn't finish the play. And now Wasatch Academy back with the possession here with 30 seconds remaining as Langdon will slow it up a little bit. Over to McEwen, far side. He's not going to attack. And an offensive foul there as he lowered the shoulder. He can't believe it, and he's got to be careful as that now number three on Kobe McEwen. Couple big turnovers here late by Wasatch Academy. In the corner, Gunther with the pump fake will dribble it out. Ashworth thought about it. Pass over to Doman. Jackson. And that pass stolen away by Langdon. Over to Squire. And now McEwen off the floor. That's an important sub as this will be Selchuk with the shot. Couldn't get it to fall, and we've hit the half. 38-32, the Tigers out in front of Lone Peak. start the second half and we start it with a Tiger lead of six. Kobe McEwen unofficially with 18 points through the first quarter. That's him and an early foul called here on Tyson Doman, his first of the contest. He's going to say Frank Jackson leading the Knights in scoring with 11. Harkness second with nine. Is that take to the glass by Acott? No good and rebound to the Knights. Jackson has not had a great night shooting the ball. Been a lot of clogged lanes, a long three-pointer is good for Steven Ashworth. And now he has 10 points tonight, his second made three-pointer there. And Lone Peak, look at that, they trail by one possession, 38-35. Lead was as big as 10, and that play, broken up by Jackson, tracks it down, and able to save it and lay it up and in. Nate Harkness. Five quick points for the Knights, and it's 38-37. Already 
Lone Peak with some added intensity to start this second half. Outside Stevenson, drive, cut off, good defense there by Ashworth. Stevenson able to lift over him and get the shot away and good. In the corner, Harkness with the pump fake and the drive. That one off the rim and rebounded by Wasatch Academy as McEwen up the floor playing with three fouls right now. He's going to attack Doman. Goes glass and Kobe McEwen, his 20th point on the night. What a night tonight for the future Aggie. Six and a half left. A good, good pace to start this second half. Ashworth kick out, three-pointer on the way from Ross. No good and rebounded by McEwen. Quickly up the floor to Shamil Stevenson, driving, and an offensive foul called on Stevenson as he lowered that shoulder. There to take it was Ashworth. Stevenson will come off as he just picked up his third foul. Squire checks in for him. So now Stevenson and McEwen, the top two scorers for Wasatch Academy, both with three fouls. Doman for three. That shot no good. Acott with the board and the foul here on Ross as you could hear that hack from up here. McEwen, entry pass, and Jackson comes over with the block, and then they're going to call the foul as it was Rowe attacking, and Jackson got a lot of ball but did get some contact there, and to the line will go Ross for, Rowe for two. That was the third foul on Frank Jackson as well. A big one there is at the line. Rowe able to go two of two and push the lead back up to seven now, 44-37. Jackson still on the floor, playing with three. Big decision there from Coach Evans. Long three-pointer, no good, rebounded by Rowe. And now just like that, Wasatch Academy with a chance to go back up by double figures, can't do it. Acott with the board, going strong, and Emmanuel Acott with his first points of the second half. The lead is nine. Well, this was a one-point ball game about a minute ago, and it's been an 8-0 run for Wasatch Academy here early. Entry pass to Jackson, going up. That shot, wow, was all but down for the senior, Frank Jackson. Cross-court pass, Acott. Three-pointer, no good. Yossip able to save it into the hands of Harkness, and now Jackson will push it up the floor to Doman quickly. Doman going reverse. That shot too long is Kobe McEwen there, and he will settle it down a little bit for the Tigers. Picked up by Doman. Rowe there for the screen. McEwen's going to fire the three. Shot no good. Jackson with the board. Doman step back. Now to Harkness. Ball knocked away. No foul call there. Around the perimeter it goes to Frank Jackson driving. And he will float that one just over the front of the rim. Love his touch from around the cylinder. 13 points for Frank Jackson. Squire comes around to pick up the ball, top of the key. And that ball stolen away by Chantry Ross. Over to Ashworth to lay it up. Can't get it to fall. That shot blocked. That's why you follow the play. Vrankic came back to get the block. McEwen with the drive and a late foul called here on Doman. McEwen thought he got fouled by Jackson. I thought he did as well. They won't give it there. They will give it instead to Tyson Doman, his second. That's easy. Off the inbound, Emmanuel Acott. No one picks him up as he set up camp right underneath the basket. Lead back to nine. Doman stolen away. Acott running the floor behind the back. Emmanuel Acott left-handed the lead up to 11. And this may be the largest lead of the game. It's a timeout taken by Coach Evans, 50 to 39. The Tiger fans roaring at Geno Morgan Court. It's been a 12-2 run for the Tigers over the last two and a half minutes of the contest. Open the lead up to 11. Jackson, far side, being guarded by McEwen. Jackson driving, floats it left-handed, couldn't get it, gets the board, goes back up, and gets the putback. 15 for Frank Jackson as Acott will pass back out to McEwen. Ball worked around the perimeter. Now inside to Rowe. Again, throw it down. Jackson Rowe. 
Gunther with the drive, coming over on the help was Acott. He'll pick up his first foul, and Talmadge Gunther will go to shoot a pair of freebies. Gunther at the line goes one of two. His first point of the night. 10-point lead for the Tigers. Outside, Squire tried to dunk it. That's why you lay it in, and Coach Condi yelling that from the bench. A missed opportunity there by the Tigers. Acott trying to get back. What a nice save by Jackson, able to go behind the back. He has it now. Gunther going to try the three. Shot no good, and the rebound by Vrinkic. Now he's going to play point, 6-7. Handling the ball, cross court. Squire trying to atone, left that short and rebounded by Chad Pollard for the Knights. Ashworth to Jackson, guarded by Squire. Good size advantage, Frank's gonna try to take advantage of it and he does. Boy, you hate to see that if you're a Tiger fan. Frank Jackson just pull up and hit it. And now maybe Frank can get that shot going. Baseline kick, McEwen finds it. Kick out, and an offensive foul on McEwen, number four on the future Aggie. McEwen still on the floor here. As we've got 145 left, Jackson underneath, banging, and Frank Jackson with five straight points. He is starting to feel it. 52-47. Boy, McEwen just juked Ashworth out of his shoes and a foul here. Gonna be called on Gunther. First foul on Talmadge Gunther. Inbound, looking the way of Rowe and turned it over. It's good defense down low by Harkness. That ball nearly stolen. Jackson, again, couldn't get the shot to fall. Ball batted around and it will go to Wasatch Academy. Boy, it's been a second half of runs, as right now an eight to two run put on by Lone Peak. So they've pulled back to within five here. That ball stolen by Ashworth, active hands. Gunther coming down, looking for some help. Floated up by Pollard, couldn't get it to fall. He's fouled on the shot and will head to the line to shoot two as this foul called on Vrinkic, his third foul. Chad Pollard at the line and he casually knocks them both down. 52-49. As we are inside of one minute left here in the third quarter, Langdon passes over to Acott. Entry pass to Rowe, that entry pass a little off the mark. Rowe couldn't handle it and turned back over to Lone Peak. Pollard pass out to Jackson to tie it up. That shot long. Numbers, Acott over to Rowe again! Jackson Rowe has put on a dunk contest tonight. And that ball, they're gonna say out off of Wasatch Academy as Coach Evans telling his squad to calm things down. Jackson cut into the hoop, defended well by Squire. Pollard looking to drive. That shot no good. And then the pass was deflected, Ashworth with an athletic shot, and then nearly turned over again. It will go to Wasatch Academy as it was Chad Pollard putting the pressure on. 5.6 seconds left, Lone Peak gonna come out and try to contend things here as it's gonna be Langdon with the floater, couldn't get it to fall, and the third quarter's come to a close. Lone Peak chipping away, they trail here by five, heading to the fourth. Eight minutes away from one of these teams leaving here undefeated. Ashworth pulling up the three, Steven Ashworth. 13 points for the sophomore guard. And he has officially earned sophomore stud status here tonight. A dynamic three point shooter. He's hit three of them in the contest as Stevenson being hounded by him now. Entry pass, Rowe, kick out, three pointer on the way from Yossip. Front of the iron, couldn't get it to fall. Rebounded by Lone Peak. Ashworth picked up his dribble, now gets it back. Yeah. 
Jackson, baseline, driving to the hoop. Jackson has tied things up. 20 points for the future Blue Devil as Coach Evans cheering on his team defensively, trying to get some extra effort here. Stevenson down low to row. Watch out. Jackson Rowe lives at 11 feet. 56-54, the advantage to the Tigers. Harkness, Jackson for the lead. No good, a long rebound that Doman's able to track down. Ashworth, you gotta pick him up. If you don't, he'll do that. 16 for the sophomore and Lone Peak has the lead 57. 56 with 618 left. Yossip back to Acott, looking to drive. The lane was there. The shot wouldn't fall. Batted around and controlled by Ashworth. Numbers for Lone Peak the other way. Pollard looking to drive. Passes over to Jackson. And that ball batted out, saved. And Harkness going to try the three. Shot no good, and McEwen able to sky to haul it in, playing with four personal fouls. McEwen driving, and a blocking foul going to be called there. McEwen, nice job attacking. Again, got to be careful with the four. Boy, Doman just trying to bait McEwen into those situations. So he picked up his third foul, and an offensive foul there on Acott is beating him to the spot. That time was Harkness. Frank Jackson will head up the offense on this possession, picked up by Stevenson, who has three fouls. Ashworth, heat check, and he's not on fire there. He's been feeling it, four three-pointers tonight for Steven Ashworth. It's Jackson, row over on the switch. Back to Jackson, able to shake Stevenson, attacking the glass, that shot no good, and rebounded by Yasip Vrankic. Little slow up the floor is Vrankic. Couldn't tell where the contact happened is McEwen. The three-pointer, no good. Jackson able to pull in the rebound. Five minutes remaining here. Ashworth nearly turned it over. Yes, he did. Back to the Tigers. McEwen, Doman guarding him. Near half court, passes over to Squire, top of the key. Corner three by Yasub. that shot good. He's taken that shot a couple times. He hasn't hit it till just then. His first points since the first quarter, and now seven on the ball game for the 6'7 junior, Yasub Vrankic. Doman driving, look at McEwen, just has to stick his hands up, he can't play D. And going up and taking advantage that time is Chad Pollard. Again, McEwen playing with four. He has to give that up. Stevenson now looking to drive baseline and throw it down. Six points for Stevenson. What an aggressive play there. In fact, he got the camera off the standard. That's how hard Shamil Stevenson threw that one down, the 6'5 junior. What a dunk. What a play. Midway through this fourth quarter, 61-59. The Tigers out in front. Been an entertaining ball game. On the take, Pollard contended by Vrankic and McEwen with the board. Over to Squire and he traveled with it. Doman. Near side, Jackson. Working on Stevenson, the hesitation as Stevenson was right there with him, made it a tough shot. Great D that time by Shamil Stevenson. And McEwen trying to get it up the floor quickly, threw it away. Boy, some big turnovers by the Tigers here in this second half have led a little bit to their undoing. The lead was 11 with just two, three minutes left in the third. It's now two. Shot no good from Harkness. He's had a tough time shooting the ball here tonight. Rebound goes the way of the Tigers. McEwen, calm here. Screen by Rowe. McEwen going glass, count the bucket. McEwen with an aggressive take there. 63-59 and a timeout by Coach Evans. 
Big possession here both ways. Jackson working around the screen, going to try the three. Frank Jackson! What a shot! 23 now for Frank Jackson, and just like that, he leads all scorers in the contest. 2.30 left, 63-62, McEwen. In the corner, Stevenson kicked back out to McEwen, and he's going to settle things up. Good decision here by the senior guard. Boy, two of the best point guards in the state going head-to-head. -head. McEwen going to pull from just inside the arc. Couldn't get it to fall. That hits the standard, and we'll go to Lone Peak. Six team fouls on the Knights, five on the Tigers as we have two minutes remaining. Jackson with the spin. And a foul call here on McEwen. He is done. That is number five as Jackson will go to the line to shoot. So I've led you astray, McEwen. That was number four. As Jackson, good on both. Actually, excuse me, they actually gave the foul to Acott. Wow, I'm all over the board tonight. Number three on Acott. 64-63, the lead to the Knights. 150 left. Inside, Rowe, and a foul called here on Doman as he came down and reached. Rowe at the free throw line, able to give the lead back to Wasatch Academy as he makes them both. 16 points for Jackson Row tonight. 65-64. The Tigers out in front. Approaching a minute and a half left. Jackson gonna attack. That shot blocked by Stevenson. And then nearly stolen away by Pollard, though he stepped out of bounds. Minute 30 left. McEwen still on the bench. Langdon. Holding on to a one-point lead, drives, tough shot there, forced it, Doman comes up with it. And the other way for Lone Peak is Ashworth with it. Langdon comes up to defend him. Good defense there by the junior guard. Now Doman, one minute left here for the Knights. One minute left. Ashworth with it. Lone Peak trails by one. They get it into the hands of Jackson. Vrankic defending him. Has the step back. Instead, Jackson attacks, and it pays off. Up the floor quickly. Shamil Stevenson looking to go the other way. No whistle blown there as Stevenson got it. Thought he got fouled. It's Doman who comes out with it. 26 seconds left. Lone Peak with the lead. Wasatch has to foul here, and they will foul Nate Harkness. Harkness at the line, and he is good on both free throws. 68-65, the lead for Lone Peak. Langdon. Over to Squire, McEwen still on the bench, so I think he did foul out, though they never gave a horn. The clock down to eight seconds left, and that ball nearly turned over. Vrankic tries to save it, and it's out of bounds off of Lone Peak. Four seconds left, a three-point lead for the Knights. It will be Tiger ball. So let's set up the situation. Kobe McEwen did foul out of this game earlier in the contest. I apologize, the actions of the officials didn't look like it. He's gone. Of the remaining players for Wasatch Academy on the floor, only one has hit a three, and that is Josip Vrankic. He will be inbounding the ball. 68-65, Lone Peak, 4.2 seconds left. Looking inbound, he does so to Langdon. Langdon, you gotta shoot the three. Contested, it's no good, and the Lone Peak Knights escape. 68-65 over Wasatch Academy. Last season ended in heartbreak for the Lone Peak Knights. They lost to the Viewmont Vikings in the, in the playoffs. They atoned for that last week, got a big win over Viewmont. They came in tonight 2-0 on the season, had to travel down to Mount Pleasant to take on a very good 7-0 Wasatch Academy Tiger squad. And this was a game featuring two future D1 commits, one being Frank Jackson, the future Blue Duke Blue Devil, the other being Kobe McEwen for Wasatch Academy, the future Aggie up in Cache Valley. And McEwen, boy, he got things going early on. Fantastic start for McEwen. Is in the first quarter. 
he would finish with 12 points, attacked the hoop, was able to get drives, some free throws, a fantastic start for the future Aggie, Kobe McEwen. After one, it would be the Tigers up by seven on the Lone Peak night, second quarter, and that lead would stay in that six to eight range. Again, Kobe McEwen able to get some free throws, able to get a nice drive, saw a little more balance in that second quarter, including big plays by Jackson Rowe. He had a huge dunk that really brought the crowd to the feet in that second quarter for the Knights. It was a tough night for Frank Jackson, was not 100% tonight health-wise, and you could tell in that first half, a lot of drives to the hoop that just would not fall for the future Duke Blue Devil. It would be Stephen Ashworth who led the way in that first half, really, uh, for this team, just kind of hoping that Frank Jackson, that his health would come around. To the second half, we go. Again, Wasatch Academy out in front. In the second half, Emmanuel Acott got things going. Again, Jackson Rowe with a couple more big dunks for the Tigers to bring their crowds to their feet. But Frank Jackson, he started to get things going, started to get into a feel in that third quarter, hit some big free throws and a big three-pointer that gave him 18 points through three, and it looked like he was starting to get a little bit of a feel in this ballgame. To the fourth quarter we go, still a lead for the Tigers as they led by five going to the fourth. And it would be the Frank Jackson Show. He got things going, had a nice pull-up jumper, a big three-pointer for Frank that would give a lead to Lone Peak in this ballgame. Wasatch Academy would try to hang around. Vrankic able to hit a big three-pointer. But uh, in the end of this, Lone Peak able to pull away as it would be Stephen Ashworth, a pair of threes in that fourth quarter. He would finish with 16 points, second in scoring for Lone Peak tonight. The sophomore was fantastic from outside. Frank Jackson led the way with 27 points. Again, we mentioned Coach Evans talked about was not 100% tonight, was playing with, uh, with some symptoms there, struggled at times tonight, but he still led the way with 27 points tonight as Lone Peak able to finish with a 68-65 win over the Wasatch Academy Tigers for the second year in a row. Lone Peak wins this game in the fourth quarter. Frank Jackson unofficially had nine points in the fourth quarter to lead the way for Lone Peak. We mentioned Ashworth, a couple big threes in that fourth quarter, and you know a lot of teams in 5A thinking, hey, as soon as Frank is gone this year, maybe we'll have a chance well not so fast this is a young lone peak squad coach evans talked about the youth particularly ashworth stepping up here tonight we we start sometimes two and three sophomores we're a young team and nate harkness is a junior but the seniors did a great job tonight tyson doman uh chase pollard chad pollard clay wilson um you know uh talmage gunther and frank they all just did a great job tonight this Wasatch Academy team, not a team that a lot of people will have a chance to watch. Encourage you to go find this game if you can. As uh, Emmanuel Acott, you know, we, well, we talked about Kobe McEwen, future Aggie, led the way with 22 points, but it's guys like Emmanuel Acott. Shamil Stevenson, a fantastic defender uh, and, and a good offensive player, but then you have a kid like Jackson Rowe. This kid lives at 11 feet. He lives above the rim. A number of dunks tonight. That athleticism gave uh, Lone Peak all sorts of fits. In fact, they had an 11-point lead late in the third quarter. Coach Evans talked about how they adjust to the athleticism of the Tigers. Tried to pack it in our defensively because we were overextending and then they were getting lanes and lanes and their big guy was getting dunks. And he's a big time player. So we tried to pack it in and make him shoot outside. And that was, that was the goal. And then we brought in a couple of those seniors for toughness, and they did a great job. The good news for 2A, they don't have to deal with Wasatch Academy. This is a fantastic team down here tonight. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lone Peak Knights. Fell late here, 68-65. They play an independent schedule, which means they travel around and play teams from all over the country. Be sure to follow this Wasatch Academy squad as they represent the state of Utah. But tonight it was the Lone Peak Knights behind Frank Jackson and the sophomore Stephen Ashworth able to get a 68-65 win here tonight on the road in Mount Pleasant. Remain perfect 3-0 on uh, the early start here to this season.